Hi, it's David, Ask the Electrician, and let's look at how to wire a light switch. First, we're going to take a look at common switches. Then we're going to look at switch connections, and then typical wiring diagrams. And we're also going to go over the basics of using this handy little tool, the, the wire stripper, and how it's used for making up wiring and light switches. We're going to go over the two most common types of light switches, a standard style, which is a toggle switch, and a decorative style, which is a flat rocker switch. We're going to be covering the basic light switch, which is a 120 volt, 15 amp single pole light switch, very commonly used in the home for several different applications, but most of all, for turning on and off lights. So before we get started, we want to make sure the electricity is turned off, and we can check this with a typical non-contact voltage tester, as seen here which lights up with a little red LED indicator that shows you if power is present or not. The cover plate may also be removed to get a more accurate reading using your non-contact voltage tester. Placing the voltage tester inside the electrical box next to the side of the light switch should give you a reading whether the electricity is on or off. If the switch has already been removed and the wires are exposed, you definitely want to check with a non-contact voltage tester or other reliable tester to make sure the voltage has been turned off. In a typical panel, you'll see the circuit breakers listed showing the plugs, the lights, and various circuits within the home should be noted that sometimes the lights are on a circuit with other items such as receptacle outlets. This is very, very common. So you might want to look for a circuit breaker that is a 15 amp circuit breaker commonly, and it may show that it's for lights and plugs. You may also see that the lights are sh on a shared circuit with smoke detectors. This is very common as well. Now in a larger panel, and this one is a 200 amp panel, you have several circuits and a combination of both twin circuit breakers and full size circuit breakers, but you'll be looking for a 15 amp circuit breaker. So in this case, we do see a shared circuit, it says entryway LP for lights and plugs, 15 amps. Now, if you're an electrician and you're checking out the lighting circuit, you will see wiring such as this. Uh, this is for qualified electricians only. Typically, this is a number 14 wire type non-metallic cable, which is in the panel, and it is attached to a 15 amp single pole breaker as well. And depending on the method of identifying the cables, um, as in this one here, there are markers from the original wiring that do show what the circuit wiring is for on the inside as well as out on the cover. This is very, very helpful for the electrician. Now, if you happen to have a fuse box, you will notice that the fuses will be 15 and 20 amp for the lights and the receptacles. So typically for the lighting circuits, this is a 15 amp fuse and it should be labeled for lighting. And of course you do wanna double check to make sure you do have the power to your light switch off. And then lastly, before you leave the panel, make sure to put a note on the panel showing that you're working on a circuit and that the circuit should not be turned back on. Okay, now that we have the circuit breaker off and the power is turned off to this switch, let's take a look at the typical light switches that we have in the home. 
These are single pole 120 volt 15 amp switches. And whether you're replacing a newer switch, such as a toggle switch, a rocker switch, or an older switch, which is the old toggle switches, or the push button switches, which are really rare, but they're still out there, this will cover all of those situations. Now the replacement switches that we'll be dealing with here are the standard toggle switch, which shows the on and off, and then we have the rocker switch, which is the decorative style. Now you'll notice that these switches are almost completely identical on the back side, on the standard switch and the decorative switch. One of the biggest differences with the standard toggle switch is that it does show on and off on the switch handle itself. And you will notice that on the frame of this switch, it does show that it's a 15 amp 120 volt and that it is UL approved underwriters laboratory and you'll know you have a reliable switch. You will also notice on this switch that it shows that it is for copper wire only. If you're replacing a switch in a mobile home or a modular home that is wired with aluminum wire, you must get a switch that is either wired for aluminum, is approved for aluminum, or you will have to do a pigtail with copper wire, and I'll show you how to do that in this video. And if you're replacing a decorative switch, the only difference is that you'll see that there is not an on and off designation showing on the switch. There will be a mark on the frame, the metal frame of the switch, that shows you that it is the top, and that would be the on position, so make sure you have that orientation correct. Again, we're taking a look at the back of a decorative style light switch, which is almost identical to regular toggle switch. But let's take a look at the way that the connection points are on this light switch. And first we have the green ground screw, which is for the ground wire. And next we'll see the back wiring features of this light switch. There are two different holes in the back of the light switch. One is for the power coming in, one is for the power going out to the light fixture. The switch is not polarity sensitive, so it does not matter which goes into which hole as far as the power coming in and the power going out to the light switch. And now let's take a look at the side wiring for this light switch, which is the two brass screws. Same type of connections as the push-in connectors for the back wiring, only these are the brass screws, ones for the power in, ones for the power out, and again, this is not polarity sensitive. And let's take a look at the designations for this switch again. It's 15 amp rated, 120 volt, UL approved. For copper wire only and for back wiring, the wire type must be solid, not stranded. This is typical for a type NM non-metallic wire that is used in homes. So again, we're taking a look at the different types of wiring. The methods of wiring a light switch will be either the push-in connectors or the screw terminal connections. The push-in connectors is for back wiring and the screw terminal connections is for the side wiring. Again, this is for 15 amp, 120 volt switches. Now, some of the features of a back wired switch that are very handy for back wiring. First, you have a strip gauge that shows you how much insulation should be stripped off of the solid wire before inserting. You'll see the holes on the back of the switch for the easy push-in connection. And if you need to release a wire from the switch, there is an opening that says push to release. This little rectangular hole is for a small straight slot screwdriver. And if you push it in, that will allow you to release the wire. And now let's take a look at the two most common types of wiring configurations that we see in the home. Uh, with this one diagram, number one, we have power coming into the switch box from the circuit where you find a neutral and a hot wire. The neutral wire is typically junctioned and spliced with a wire nut, as shown here. The second most common wiring configuration that we see for light fixtures and switches is where the power enters up at the light fixture first and then a loop of wire is brought down to the switch box and used for switching. You will find a white wire 
that should be marked with black tape or a black marker to indicate that it is not a neutral wire. It is a white wire colored black that is being used for switching. Now let's take a look at how we don't want to wire switches. We do not want to connect more than one wire to each terminal or push in connector. Switches that are wired like this, where there's multiple wires that are connected can cause problems. And in some cases, you're gonna to have to have a qualified electrician to make up these wires and keep track of what's going on so that a new switch can be installed properly. Again, the best way to clean up a wiring mess like this is to create pigtails for the wiring so you make sure that you're only connecting one wire to the switch for the power coming in and one wire to the switch for the power going out to the light fixture. All the wires inside a box such as this must be carefully identified. Now creating a pigtail splice is pretty easy. We prepare the wires by putting two or more wires that are the same length side by side. We add one more wire with that group of wires. We remove the insulation from all these wires carefully. We cut them evenly at the end and then we twist them together. And then we install a twist on wire connector and then the pigtail is complete and ready for use. And now let's cover the basics of wire stripping. This handy tool is basically a combination tool which allows you to strip wire carefully using the right wire gauge size. Openings on the side shows you which gauge of wire to use on the tool to strip it out, to strip out the wire. You can also use this tool for making a hook for the wire to connect for side wiring. And you can also use the very tip of the wire stripper to act as a plier to crimp down the hook on the wire when making up the side wired screw terminals. Now getting into the wiring of the switch, we take a look at this example where we have two wires that are going to be used for the switch. One is marked as being hot when the wiring was installed. The electrician marked this as the power feed coming in. And again, we carefully identified this and made sure that the circuit is turned off. Now we do see a yellow wire nut with two white wires in the back of this box. So that tells us that this box has the power coming into it, the circuit power coming in for both the hot wire and the neutral wire. And we can review the wiring diagram that we saw before with this type of wiring configuration in the home where the circuit wiring comes into the switch box. You have the neutral wire that is connected with a wire nut, the two black wires go through the switch and then the wiring goes up to the light fixture. And for wiring this specific switch, we are using the back wired method. We pushed in both black wires into the separate holes in the back of the switch. We've made up our ground wire on the green ground screw. And now we're getting ready to install the wiring and the switch into the electrical box. It is important to note here that we are keeping the ground, the bare ground wire away from the side terminals on this switch to make sure we don't have a short. And we are keeping these wires carefully folded back, getting them into the electrical box. Now with this type of switch box, electrical box that we have, this is either plastic or fiberglass. If it was a metal box, we would be driving in the screws on the side terminals all the way in just as a precaution to keep them from making contact with the metal electrical box and causing a short. And we push the switch into place, fasten it with the screws, flush with the wall, and we're ready to put on our cover plate. And the cover plate has been installed and in place, and it looks great. And now that we're done with the push-in 
back wired connection for the light switch. We're going to take a look at side wiring a light switch and we're also going to be looking at another method of wiring that we see in the home. Okay, you're about halfway through, but don't miss my helpful resource that will help you wire it right and avoid the most common mistakes at the end of this video. Okay, now we're getting into the side wiring of this particular light switch. We are attaching these wires to the brass screws. And again, this, the switches are not polarity sensitive, so it does not matter which screw the switching wires are attached to. And in this example, we have a white wire that's being used as a switching wire, so it is colored with electrical tape or a black felt marker to indicate that it is a power conductor. And so now we're continuing on with wiring a decorative type light switch with side wiring in a light switch box. This is a typical, another typical configuration for wiring switches in a home. So you do notice that we've got a black wire and a white wire that has black electrical tape on it that is attached to the side wire terminals of this light switch. Again, this method of wiring is found in a lot of the older homes where a neutral wire is not found. In this case, there is a white wire that is indicated as a switched wire with black electrical tape and then a black wire that is attached to the switch as well. So this is a switch loop from the light fixture to the switch. So we've made up the wiring to the two side terminals where the black wire and the white wire colored with black electrical tape are attached to the switch. So you'll notice that the wiring has been attached to the screw terminals in the clockwise manner and the screws are turned down and tightened in the same clockwise rotation. And we've done the same thing with the bare ground wire onto the green ground screw. It is in the clockwise manner and then we've tightened down the ground screw with a clockwise rotation. And now we're getting ready to install the switch into the switch box into the wall. So we're folding the wires back carefully, getting ready to attach the switch to the box. Again, we're being careful to make sure that the ground wire is off to the side and it is not near the screw terminals of the switch. And we've attached the switch to the switch box and getting ready to install the cover plate. And this switch is complete. Okay, come to AskTheElectrician.com. Find the picture that shows the top 10 electrical mistakes and how to avoid them. It is a free downloaded ebook that is yours for visiting the website and check out all the other resources that we have for you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Check out the rest of the videos that we have in our channel. So don't forget to help others. That's what it's all about. And don't forget, let your light shine. So this has been Dave from AskTheElectrician.com. Come and visit us at the website. Love to see you there.